everybody. Welcome to a special edition of HBCU Conversations. We're, we're pulling out the big dogs today. You, you see them in the screen here. We have the president of Virginia State University, Dr. Makola Abdullah. Sir, you are you are back in the office. Thank you for, for taking a little bit of time to spend with us. Uh, the people out there watching, got a lot of VSU faithful. They're out there. They're out there. <laughs> They're out hey, there. Yeah, 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 that's what we're talking about. Thank you very much for having me, Tali. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be around you guys. Uh, HBCU Game Day. I'm just proud of the work that you're doing in the HBCU space. And uh, thank you for what you do. Hey, absolutely. It is our pleasure to have you on today. Uh, so let's jump right into it. There's a lot of things happening uh, that you cannot control, but you've got to be the leader uh, of your ship there uh, on campus and, and with the Trojan faithful. How do you even begin to plan for so many unknowns? I tell you, well, first, thank you. Um, uh, there's so many, I think all of us are dealing with a sense of uncertainty. You know, the idea that there's a, if you will, a pandemic outside of all of our doors uh, and dealing with that on a personal level and a professional level. I just want to make sure I encourage everybody to get, get sleep, get rest, to take care of themselves because it's, it's, it's a stressful time. Uh, on campus, we are very fortunate. Uh, our, our faculty and students uh, have been very patient with each other. They're doing an incredible job of really continuing education uh, going forward. Uh, and so, and as you said, now the rest of it is so many universities, uh, so many uh, government agencies, so many businesses are now trying to plot the course forward uh, without really knowing what the next day looks like. And so it is, it is a challenging. We're planning simultaneously for the best uh, and for the worst. Uh, we are hoping for the best. Uh, and we want to make sure we keep everybody safe, you know, keep everybody alive. Well, the great thing about our universities, uh, they are public service, um, but they're also a business. Um, so you have to kind of weigh the, the business model, um, the service model. There's a lot of different components that they go into the decisions that lie ahead in the months to come. There, there are. There's so many, so many things that come into that. Um, but I tell you, I'm, I'm more uh, hopeful going forward uh, in that I believe that people have really coalesced around the, the medical challenges, the public health challenge that we face. Uh, and unlike when we all kind of shut our campuses down and we were unsure and everybody was making the decisions in a vacuum, I think going forward as we start to look to reopen or look to restart the economy, uh, that with the state of Virginia, with the federal government, and uh, that we'll be working with some strong recommendations from healthcare professionals on what we need to do to keep people safe. Because that's that's number one. I mean, I, I can't say that we don't think about finances, we don't think about the, the economy, um, but that's something you can always recover from. Uh, but people losing their lives, that's that's a whole other thing. So we want to make sure that we keep uh, healthcare as number one. And look, Doc, you know, a lot of people are, understand it's not the most important thing, but people are thinking about sports, looking forward to the fall, hoping that maybe that can kind of, you know, be that that elixir that, that kind of takes away our, our ills from time to time. But the CIAA, the SWAC, the MEAC, you know, all these conferences, you're, you're dealing with states. Some states might be in a different situation than, than another state. Like there's just so many, the more you think of how easy can I make this possibly in my mind to wrap around, there's like another layer of complexity there. It is. I mean, it's hard. And, and you know, as you know, I love sports uh, in my mind. Uh, I'm one of the best athletes to ever, <laughs> ever play the game. You know, I mean, the NFL and the NBA didn't come calling, but they should have. I was really that good in my mind. Right, I was that good. Right, right, right. Uh, and so I, I enjoy watching young people on the field and on the court, uh, enjoying themselves and learning how to win and learning how to bond with each other. Sports is an important part of our lives. Uh, before we opened up, I think I mentioned to you that I think there was something about when the NBA uh, canceled their games that kind of let everyone know because sports is so much part of what is normal that when the NBA canceled, it kind of let us know that things weren't in a normal condition. And I think that's going to be the challenge going forward. If things aren't normal, um, will we start? I, I don't know. I know that's a question a lot of people are asking. And I think it's more of the public health, health question of when can we have people in large groups together. Uh, I, like you, like everyone who's listening, uh, wants to see our young men and women on the field and on the court and in the classroom and in the dormitories. Uh, but we'll have to make those decisions based on based on the health of everyone involved. So, um, you know, I, I, I hope like you, I wish like you, and we are, and we are planning for all of the alternatives. Well, I'm, I'm not going to 
stick you for an answer here, but when I started thinking about it, uh, and, and each week, I'm just me personally, I've become less and less optimistic that fall is 100%. Uh, but when you talk about playing games with no fans, uh, a lot of HBCUs early in the season, not so much Division Two as much as Division One. you know, they have those money games where it's almost like it's not worth it. It would be an expense to, to play an empty stadium football game when, when you needed that, that paycheck. You know, that, that is so interesting. I, I, I hearken back to the first time LeBron was asked that question, of course, and it was, oh, my gosh, why would we play without fans? And now I think in this situation, I think all of us, I mean, I'd, I'd pay to watch almost anybody uh, play a basketball game on television. I miss sports uh, that much. Uh, I think we're going to have to consider those kinds of things that were previously unconsiderable. Uh, it's a new world, uh, and the challenges are certainly new. And and I don't I don't know if I know the answer to those questions. I would prefer, of course, not to play uh, without fans. But at the same time, if if that's what we need to stay healthy, and there's no other option, you know, what else would we do? So I hear you. I mean, this is um, it's it's really unprecedented. I can't even imagine. Like, could you have imagined a couple of months ago? that there would be no sports at all. That, that, that's, that's something I don't think any of us could have ever fathomed in our entire life. It's amazing that a couple of weeks ago feels like a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like I, you know, when, when the, the I think the Lakers played the Clippers, it was like, man, this is like the biggest thing, a precursor to the finals. And then it was like, oh, my God, we might not have a season. That, that feels like centuries ago. So it's the time – uh, it's like we've been living in dog years uh, the last couple of weeks. We have. You know, we were at the at the CIAA, and uh, uh, my good friend, Dr. Warmack and his uh, Claflin Panthers uh, got lucky and uh, upset the Virginia State University uh, Trojans uh, in the first round of, of the CIAA. But then we were getting ready uh, for the playoffs. We made the playoffs and getting ready for the playoffs before it got canceled. And I think that's, that was another kind of hit to let me know that things aren't, you know, they aren't normal, they're not regular, uh, and that we're going to be doing – some very different things going forward. I mean, we might have to televise a, a, a Nerf game between me and you at some point, you know, just to get some sports on television. I had the most unathletic run last night. I, I think you might. I did six miles last night, and I felt like I, I felt like I looked like a whale out there with Chihuahua legs going up the sidewalk. So you, you, you'll probably get me on, on that one. Um, Thank you. I, I, I appreciate you saying that. That was far too kind. Far too kind. I'm, I'm no longer aerodynamic up here. This hair is causing a little drag as well. I, I can't do anything with that. Uh, Dr. Abdullah from Virginia State University, uh, how complex are decision makings now? You've got you got to deal with uh, your governors. Uh, you, you're in charge of your school. You've got the CIAA. You've got the NCAA. Uh, and I'm sure not everybody says or thinks the same exact thing on every single, you know, thought. So how complex is it just to make a decision about anything? Uh, you know, it is it is incredibly complex uh, because everyone and I think that's the, the part that we have to remember is to have patience with everyone, because everybody's dealing with this new situation all at the same time. The governor, uh, uh, the, the people in the federal government, none of them were in, in, expecting something of this of this magnitude. Uh, and so it makes it very difficult. Uh, but it is it is a pleasure. I work with our state governor, uh, with our governor, with our gen members of the General Assembly. I uh, spoke to our senator today. Uh, there's so many people who want the best uh, for folks in this country, in our commonwealth, and in our institution. And so it's a pleasure to work with people who care, and so many people do care. Um, but I think it's, it's, tough. It's, tough on, it's tough on everyone. I try to remember that it's not just you know, Virginia State, it's not just universities, um, but small business owners um, are, are having it tough. The tourism industry has got it tough, and, and the federal government and the state government are trying to do what they can. So, but it is, it is a huge challenge. And uh, um, I got a colleague of mine that checks on me periodically and, and tries to make sure that I take care of myself because it can be, it can be a lot. Dr. Abdullah, I'll, I'll leave you with the floor. Uh, you have students out there who are looking to come back. You have people in high school who've just been accepted into Virginia State. Uh, a lot of questions. I'm sure there's a lot of concern. Uh, what would you say to those parents and those returning and, and new students? I would say first to the, to the students who are in class now, do the best that you can, get the best grades that you can, and, and continue to be patient as we work through this environment together. Uh, for everyone who wants to come back in the fall, I want to let everybody know that I miss you, uh, that the campus misses you, and that we want everybody back as soon as we can get everybody back and make sure that everyone is safe. 
uh, that I don't think any of us would forgive ourselves if anything happened to any young person or an, or an older person on campus uh, who was subjected to this virus because we started back too quickly. Uh, and to those who support Virginia State and support HBCUs, whether you're in government or philanthropy or just a private citizen, now is the time to give to your institution. Now is the time uh, to make sure that you can give to the students' dreams at your institution, uh, because now is the time when we need it more than ever, when the students need it more than ever. All right. Before we go, sir, you know, we got to wave the flag. We got to wave the flag. This is coming from this is coming from this is coming from the Winston-Salem State Rams. So, you know, I'm going to catch some flack about this. But I I will tell you this about Dr. Abdullah. He's a contributor, a supporter of HBCU Game Day, not only with his mouth, but as he just talked about, uh, he's a financial contributor as well. So. All that little Trojan Ram smoke, we'll, we'll let that go for today. <laughs> for I appreciate today. that. I appreciate that. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for joining us. One more time, we raise the flag for Virginia State and also raising the flag for Cross Colors, the now official clothier of HBCU Game Day. I'm going to wear this Tupac hoodie out. What? What? I'll have to hook you up. What, what size are you running nowadays, Doc? Uh, you know, I've been uh, hanging out with young people too long, so sometimes I try to get into those mediums. Uh, but you should probably send a large, given what Corona's doing to me. Send me a, send me a large. A lot of snacks. A lot of snacks happening now. So we're going to yep. make that happen. Here's Dr. McCall Abdullah, president of Virginia State, joining us today. HBCU Conversations here on HBCU Game Day. Thanks a lot for hanging out.